O banished and faithful friend, quench the thirst of heedlessness with the sanctified waters of my grace and chase the gloom of remoteness through the morning light of my divine presence. Suffer not the habitation wherein dwelleth my undying love for thee to be destroyed through the tyranny of covetous desires and overcloud not the beauty of the heavenly youth with the dust of self and passion. Clothe thyself with the essence of righteousness and let thine heart be afraid of none except God. Obstruct not the luminous spring of thy soul with the thorns and brambles of vain and inordinate affection and impede not the flow of the living waters that stream from the fountain of thine heart. Set all thy hope in God and cleave tenaciously to his unfailing mercy. Who else but him can enrich the destitute and deliver the fallen from his abasement. O oh, my servants, were ye to discover the hidden, the shoreless oceans of my incorruptible wealth, ye would of a certainty Esteem as nothing the world, nay, the entire creation. Let the flame of search burn with such fierceness within your hearts as to enable you to attain your supreme and most exalted goal the station at which ye can draw nigh unto and be united with your best beloved. O oh, my servants, let not your vain hopes and idle fancies sap the foundations of your belief in the all-glorious God. Inasmuch as such imaginings have been wholly unprofitable unto men and fail to direct their steps unto the straight path. Think ye, O oh my servants, that the hand of my all-encompassing, my overshadowing and transcendent sovereignty is chained up, that the flow of mine ancient, my ceaseless and all-pervasive mercy is checked, or that the clouds of my sublime and unsurpassed favours have ceased to rain their gifts upon men? Can ye imagine that the wondrous works that have proclaimed my divine and resistless power are withdrawn? 
all that the potency of my will and purpose has been deterred from directing the destinies of mankind. If it be not so, wherefore then have ye striven to prevent the deathless beauty of my sacred and gracious countenance from being unveiled to men's eyes? Why have ye struggled to hinder the manifestation of the almighty and all-glorious being? from shedding the radiance of his revelation upon the earth. Were ye to be fair in your judgment, ye would readily recognize how the realities of all created things are inebriated with the joy of this new and wondrous revelation. How all the atoms of the earth have been illuminated through the brightness of its glory. Vain and wretched is that which ye have imagined and still imagine. Retrace your steps, O oh my servants, and incline your hearts to him who is the source of your creation. Deliver yourselves from your evil and corrupt affections, and hasten to embrace the light of the undying fire that gloweth on the Sinai of this mysterious and transcendent revelation. Corrupt not the holy, the all-embracing and primal word of God and seek not to profane its sanctity or to debase its exalted character. O oh, heedless ones, Though the wonders of my mercy have encompassed all created things, both visible and invisible, and though the revelations of my grace and bounty have permeated every atom of the universe, yet the rod with which I can chastise the wicked is grievous, and the fierceness of mine anger against them terrible. With ears that are sanctified from vain glory, and worldly desires hearken unto the counsels which I, in my merciful kindness, have revealed unto you. And with your inner and outer eyes contemplate the evidences of my marvelous revelation. O oh, my servants, deprive not yourselves of the unfading and resplendent light 
that shineth within the lamp of divine glory. Let the flame of the love of God burn brightly within your radiant hearts. Feed it with the oil of divine guidance and protect it within the shelter of your constancy. Guard it within the globe of trust and detachment from all else but God, so that the evil whisperings of the ungodly may not extinguish its light. O oh, my servants, my holy, my divinely ordained revelation may be likened unto an ocean in whose depths are concealed innumerable pearls of great price of surpassing luster. It is the duty of every seeker to bestir himself and strive to attain the shores of this ocean so that he may, in proportion to the eagerness of his search and the efforts he hath exerted, partake of such benefits as have been preordained in God's irrevocable and hidden tablets. If no one be willing to direct his steps towards its shore, if everyone should fail to arise and find him, can such a failure be said to have robbed this ocean of its power or to have lessened to any degree its treasures? How vain! How contemptible are the imaginations which your hearts have devised and are still devising. O oh, my servants, the one true God is my witness. This most great this fathomless and surging ocean is near, astonishingly near unto you. Behold, it is closer to you than your life vain. Swift as the twinkling of an eye ye can, if ye but wish it. Reach and partake of this imperishable favor, this God-given grace, this incorruptible gift, this most potent and unspeakably glorious bounty. O oh, my servants, could ye apprehend with what wonders of my munificence and bounty I have willed to entrust your souls? Ye would 
of a truth. Rid yourselves of attachment to all created things and would gain a true knowledge of your own selves. A knowledge which is the same as the comprehension of mine own being. Ye would find yourselves independent of all else but me and would perceive with your inner and outer eye and as manifest as the revelation of my effulgent name the seas of my loving kindness and bounty moving within you. Suffer not your idle fancies, your evil passions, your insincerity and blindness of heart to dim the luster or stay the sanctity of so lofty a station. Ye are even as the bird which soareth with the full force of its mighty wings and with complete and joyous confidence through the immensity of the heavens Until, impelled to satisfy its hunger, it turneth longingly to the water and clay of the earth below it. And having been entrapped in the mesh of its desire, findeth itself impotent to resume its flight to the realms whence it came. Powerless to shake off the burden weighing on its solid wings, that bird, hitherto an inmate of the heavens, is now forced to seek a dwelling place upon the dust. Wherefore, O oh my servants, defile not your wings with the clay of waywardness and vain desires and suffer them not to be stained with the dust of envy and hate, that ye may not be hindered from soaring in the heavens of my divine knowledge. of God and his power and out of the treasury of his knowledge and wisdom I have brought forth and revealed unto you the pearls that lay concealed in the depths of his everlasting ocean. I have summoned the maids of heaven to emerge from behind the veil of concealment and have clothed them with these words of mine, words of consummate power. 
power and wisdom. I have, moreover, with the hand of divine power, unsealed the choice wine of my revelation and have wafted its holy, its hidden and musk-laden fragrance upon all created things. Who else but yourselves is to be blamed if ye choose to remain unendowed with so great an outpouring of God's transcendent and all-encompassing grace, with so bright a revelation of his resplendent mercy. O oh, my servants, there shineth nothing else in mine heart except the unfading light of the morn of divine guidance. And out of my mouth proceeded naught but the essence of truth, which the Lord your God hath revealed. Follow not, therefore, your earthly desires, and violate not the covenant of God, nor break your pledge to him. With firm determination, with the whole affection of your heart, and with the full force of your words, turn ye unto him, and walk not in the ways of the foolish. The world is but a show, vain and empty, a mere bearing the semblance of reality. Set not your affections upon it. Break not the bond that uniteth you with your Creator. And be not of those that have erred and strayed from his way. Verily I say, the world is like the vapour in a desert, which the thirsty dreameth to be water, and striveth after it with all his might, until when he cometh unto it, he findeth it to be mere illusion. It may, moreover, be likened unto the lifeless image of the Beloved, whom the lover hath sought and found in the end. After long search, and to his utmost regret, to be such as cannot fatten nor appease his hunger. O oh, my servants, sorrow not if in these days and on this earthly plane. Things contrary to your wishes have been ordained and manifested by God. 
for days of blissful joy, of heavenly delight, are assuredly in store for you. Worlds holy and spiritually glorious will be unveiled to your eyes. You are destined by him in this world and hereafter to partake of their benefits, to share in their joys, and to obtain a portion of their sustaining grace. To each and every one of them, you will no doubt attain.